When he was jailed, the judge said Colin Pitchfork would probably never be released. He was denied parole in 2016 and 2018. But as the families of Dawn Ashworth and Linda Mann continue to serve their life sentences, more than 30 years in, they're faced with the reality that this killer will now be free. Hey folks, thanks for tuning in today. I'm going to feed you an absolute black pill today, I do apologise. But we've got another video on British justice today. Now, some say that is the greatest justice system in the world. I don't know who they are, but I think they're living in the past. Most people that I speak to today believe that the British justice system has failed, especially in light of many recent cases, specifically when it comes to violent or sexual crimes. It's clearly no longer the case that the British justice system can be described as great. We've skewed so far sideways in trying to ensure fairness and compassion for serious criminals rather than attempting to mete out justice. And it is making a lot of people quite tired, I think, of the whole situation. Today's video is about the release of Colin Pitchfork, a cunning, highly intelligent by the looks of things, child rapist and child killer who admitted to committing over a thousand sex offences and who had in recent years been denied parole twice due to being considered too dangerous to release. But because this is 2021 and this is clown world, this predator is now free and living among us. This is a man who is one victim short of being classed as a serial killer of children and yet he is now being released to live on a street near you. Back on January the 23rd, 1988, he was the first person to be convicted of murder based on DNA evidence. In the years prior, he was busy exposing himself to hundreds of lone women and girls, pretty much every chance he got by the looks of things, and he admitted to doing this over a thousand times before escalating, surprise surprise, to sexual assault, rape and murder. This backs up what I've covered before on this channel in that I believe flashing is not a harmless crime committed by people who just need a hug. It's a brazen infringement of the rights of innocent people. It puts the victims in fear of immediate attack and it's all done for the perpetrator's sexual kicks and anyone convicted of flashing should be tagged for life and curfewed for life. Now Colin Pitchfork's murder victims, at least the ones that we know about, were two 15 year old girls who were killed by him in 1983 and again in 1986. They'd been raped, strangled to death and dumped pretty much out in the open. Their names were Linda Mann and Don Ashworth. A massive manhunt began and Pitchfork was eventually convicted of the murders after a mass DNA screening of over 5,000 local men. This was back when DNA testing was in its infancy and again Pitchfork actually ended up being the first person ever convicted of murder using DNA evidence. But in an example of how cunning he actually is, he almost got away with it. In what has to be one of the most 1980s moves ever, he actually persuaded a workmate called Ian Kelly to stand in for him to give a blood sample to the police. You really do have to love how lax the 1980s were. It wasn't exactly a case of Ian Kelly just walking in and claiming to be Pitchfork. It was described as a very elaborate conspiracy and it involved the replacement of the photograph in Pitchfork's passport with Kelly's photograph and also Kelly learning the details of Pitchfork's domestic life. Now apparently Pitchfork had somehow convinced Ian Kelly to do this by saying that he wanted to avoid police harassment. How much of a cretin you have to be to agree to that during a massive murder hunt is open to debate. In another very 1980s development though, either Pitchfork or Kelly were overheard bragging in the pub about this move. Some sources say it was Kelly that let the cat out the bag, and other sources suggest it was Pitchfork himself who got a bit loose-tongued after a few beers, but either way, somebody in the pub overheard it and had enough of a moral compass to think, yeah, that doesn't sound quite right, and alerted the police. So both Ian Kelly and Colin Pitchfork were arrested and that's when the police finally got Colin Pitchfork's real DNA which confirmed that he was the murderer of both of these girls. Now again, because it was the 1980s, the police had already gently persuaded an innocent man with special needs to confess to one of the murders. So 
He was released and is lucky to have been spared a miscarriage of justice due to this DNA evidence. You really do have to love the 1980s, although this kind of thing actually still goes on. So, Anyway, you can really see how scheming Colin Pitchfork is. And the three year gap between the murders also suggests that he would strike only when the circumstances were absolutely right. Or that he tried to stop killing but had an uncontrollable thirst for it and couldn't stop himself doing it again. To stop for three years and then to kill again is quite troubling, it's reminiscent of a serial killer. And there's no doubt that Colin Pitchfork would have been a serial killer had he managed to evade capture for much longer. The only difference between him and somebody that is officially classed as a serial killer is the fact that Colin Pitchfork only had two victims and you need to have three victims to be classed as a serial killer. But this man was on his way to it. You've also got that fact that he exposed himself over a thousand times and committed sexual assaults and rapes. So it makes him sound like basically an extremely unwell but unstoppable predator who really should be locked away for the rest of his life. It doesn't seem controversial to think that this is the kind of person that needs a whole life term, but not according to the British justice system and not according to the parole board who have now released him. The story leading up to his release is also quite ridiculous. After being convicted and with some changes in the law coming into force, Pitchfork ended up getting a life sentence for the murders, obviously, with a minimum term of 30 years, which is ridiculously low in the first place. But back in 2009, this was reduced on appeal to 28 years because, get this, he transcribed musical scrolls into Braille and this is a sought after and highly technical skill, which is basically performed by nobody else. So this somehow warranted this double child killer getting two years knocked off his minimum term for a life sentence. I, I just don't get it. A minimum life term is not a bargaining chip where somebody can haggle down if they're behaving themselves in jail, or it certainly shouldn't be anyway. They reduced his sentence by almost 7% when they took those two years off, and it doesn't really give much consideration to the family of the victims or the victims themselves. Two girls are dead because of this man wanting to achieve his kicks and he gets two years knocked off his sentence because it was classed as exceptional progress that he was converting these musical scrolls into braille. Now, the braille that he created has been used to help blind people around the world, but it doesn't mean that he should be getting 7% off his sentence. The guy still committed the murders. Now, not only was he allowed to do this transcription work in prison, he was also given the materials and the time to make an art sculpture, which, when you look at it, obviously shows a level of intelligence and technical skill again. Personally, I think it's shit as a piece of art, but that is subjective. It depicts an orchestra made out of scrolls of Beethoven's Ninth Symphony. Now, I do enjoy art and I enjoy creating things, but I'm quite against child rapists and killers being given the privilege of spending their time in prison making art. I just don't think that that's something that they should be allowed to do. That's just my opinion though. But not only was Colin Pitchfork allowed to create a sculpture that must have taken, as I say, a hell of a lot of time to make, it was actually exhibited in public. It actually made the papers, and I remember this happening at the time and thinking back then that that was a load of shit this sculpture. But the main issue is why are we using taxpayers' money to exhibit this work in public? Why are we treating this man like he's special? Why are we massaging the ego of a diagnosed psychopath and a convicted child killer? Just because he's got a little bit of smarts about him, he's getting treated by the prison system and the parole board and whoever else is involved with him as if he's some kind of pet project. This again gives zero consideration to the families of the victims. It desecrates the memories of the victims and it also covers over the savagery of his crimes because that gets lost. You start seeing Colin Pitchfork as a character, as a name in the paper, rather than as the absolute beast that he actually is. I'll put a link down below to this, but if you read the findings from his appeal against the length of his minimum term, 
where they knocked the two years off. You'll see what a brutal, sadistic animal this guy is. And what he did to his victims was pure savagery that cannot even be described in this video. The man is a monster. He is a sex killer of innocent children and he is a beast in every sense of the word. But he's smart and he's getting treated like a celebrity by the prison system. So he obviously kept applying for a release, probably confident by the fact that he got two years knocked off his minimum term. He applied for release at the earliest opportunity in 2016 and was knocked back. And he was again knocked back in 2018 because both times the parole board did not deem him safe enough to release from custody. Which seems to be common sense considering his crimes and the fact that there are a fair amount of teenagers walking around in society, people who this man once saw as nothing more than prey. But that good old common sense which kept him in prison because he's a danger to vulnerable people wasn't to last because despite the fact that he was apparently too dangerous to release in 2018, he has now been granted release by the parole board in 2021. They've surmised that he is no longer dangerous somehow in those three years that have passed. And after a few day releases, he's now a free man. He's out and about as we speak, probably earning good money from his braille transcription skills. And with the UK being a small place, unless he's fled the country, which would probably be quite sensible for him to do, the chances are that he lives close to somebody who is either subscribed to this channel, or at least to somebody who knows somebody who is subscribed to this channel. It's just a numbers game. And it's a guaranteed fact that no matter where he lives, he'll be living among innocent people, and whatever area he lives in, there'll be many girls in the same age range as his previous victims who are going to be like sitting ducks if he decides to take the opportunity to strike again. Because he's done it before and he enjoyed it enough that he did it twice. So how can it be considered safe that this man has been released? Are we just going to assume that he's going to turn off his predatory instincts, even though he's going to be crossing paths with people who were once considered prey by him and something will be running through his head when he sees them, whether that be a flashback to his murders back in the 80s, or whether that be a flashback to prison. Are we just going to rely on Colin Pitchfork controlling himself when he is around vulnerable people that he once overpowered and killed? He now uses the name David Thorpe, apparently, although you can be sure that he'll have changed that already. And he also looks like this. And again, you can safely assume that he'll have made attempts to change his appearance as well. And he'll also have the police on speed dial as his personal protection team, just in case he's ever recognised. There's no doubt about that. This guy will be protected at the taxpayer's expense, and he'll be supported all the way, way more than you or I could ever hope to be. But that is Britain for you. Even Ian Huntley, the SOAM killer who killed Holly Wells and Jessica Chapman, even he's looking forward to release in the not too distant future. He was sentenced to 40 years back in 2003, which means he's almost halfway through his sentence. That means that one day, almost certainly, we're going to read about how Ian Huntley has been released. And just like with Colin Pitchfork, right up until that day happens, the politicians and the experts and the media will say, oh, it's almost certain that he'll never be released, until one day he gets in front of a parole board having said all the right things and displayed all the right behaviours, and they say, isn't he a good boy, he's definitely not dangerous anymore, and they release him, despite the fact that he was given a life sentence. But that's okay, they say, because these evil predators like Colin Pitchfork and Ian Huntley will be subject to strict licensing conditions, as if that's all these people need. Just a little bit of strictness, a swift backhander if they step out of line. I think they are past that, and I think we are kind of past discipline as well when it comes to child killers and rapists. Licensing conditions don't stop circumstances falling back into the favour of these people. It doesn't stop Colin Pitchfork coming face to face with a teenage girl one day, and we're just going to rely on him controlling himself, even though he's been shown previously to be unable to do that. So it seems to be that the British philosophy is to show the world what a loving and caring and compassionate country you are by releasing murderous child rapists into the public because they use their time in prison doing smart people things 
It really is a case of welcome to clown world. And it does seem futile sometimes when you strive to do your best for your family and then the system actively works against you by releasing a guy like this to mingle with us. The best thing you can really do is to keep your wits about you at all times and get yourself to a level where you're confident that you can protect your loved ones. But it's not a great way to have to live. We're supposed to be in a civilised society here. But for some reason, the powers that be feel that even though we have the right to lock people up for the rest of their lives, that dishing out these whole life terms is wrong. They appear to be afraid that if they do give people full life sentences, that we wouldn't be living in a civilised society. Well, I think it's quite the opposite. I think a civilised society thinks about children, thinks about the safety of the public, and any child sex killers who are convicted on DNA evidence, they should be put in prison for the rest of their lives. This is not an uncivilised take. Anyway, folks, I'm going to leave that one there. I'm sorry if I've ruined your day with this absolute black pill of a video. I hope you did find it interesting, though, regardless of the subject matter. It's always good to know what's going on. And I think quite a lot of that information about Colin Pitchfork's release or the lead up to his release hasn't really been covered too much. There has been a lot of word of the government trying to intervene to stop his release and there's been a few MPs that have come out and said they're against his release but the parole board have said no, they're sticking by their initial decision and they refuse to go back on their choice to release Colin Pitchfork so as I say he is now out. The links are down below read them at your peril. Some of them are graphic in terms of what they describe, but it does show what a complete beast Colin Pitchfork was and forever will be, and that should never be forgotten. As always, I'm very thankful that you've tuned in today. I really do appreciate it. Don't forget to support the channel by giving the video a like, subscribing if you're not already subbed, and sharing the video on your social media accounts as well if you can. And you can let me and others know what you think about this case and the video in the comments down below. I'm also an Odyssey, so if you'd rather use Alt Tech, you can subscribe to me over there. And you can get me on Twitter as well. I'm pretty bad at responding to DMs, but I do try. It would be nice to see you over there anyway. I'll put the links down below and I'll leave that one there, folks. Thanks again for your support and I'll catch you next time. I am truly appalled at this, frankly, disgusting decision by the parole board to release this repugnant man, Colin Pitchfork. We must never forget, and it doesn't matter how much time has passed, this man brutally raped and murdered two innocent teenage girls.